Now, I know for a lot of people, it's hard to speak up and to tell someone that this is going on because you fear a lot of things. You fear your life. You fear starting over. You feel like this is what all you are worthy of. Um, you've got a lot of different scenarios playing against you as to why you never open your mouth and say anything about what you're going through. Um, and I'm not just talking based on what I heard. I'm talking about what I've experienced um, in living a life of dealing with mental, physical, and emotional abuse for years. Um, if you If you never speak up, you may end up in a situation where someone takes your life or you take theirs because you've, you've harbored that hurt, pain, anger, and frustration for so long, excuse me, that you're at your wit's end. So before it gets to that point, um, you want to make sure that you open your mouth and you do what you, and you want to make sure you surround yourself with people that you feel comfortable, not so much open your mouth because like it's hard. I'm, I know it was hard, y'all. I'm not even going to sit here and pacify it or, you know, or um, diminish it and make it seem like it wasn't difficult. It's hard for someone that you know you love to treat you like garbage and for you to just have to endure it. Because, like I said, you're afraid of your life. You're afraid if you trigger them the wrong way, then this fight could be one fight that may do this, may do that. Or if you trigger them in the wrong way and you run and you leave, now you got to start all over again and try to figure out how to do this all by yourself again. Um, but I'm going to say this, that it's okay to be afraid. And it's okay to want to escape and get away from it. Yes, you may have to start back over, but you can also start back over rebuilding you, rebuilding your confidence, rebuilding your life rebuilding who you are. It may be hard in the beginning and because you become so accustomed to the financial stability they gave you, the actual support, you, you're older now and you don't wanna start over trying to deal with this, that, and the other. Take some time to be by yourself and figure out who you are and figure out what it is that you enjoy in life and what comforts you and what brings you peace, what brings you joy before you hop into something different. And that gives you a time to, to work on healing, work on figuring out life and processing that. I mean, that may be you've been along for, you know, a month, uh, a few months, six months, a year, two years, five, whatever your process is. No two people's process is the same. So you can't compare your healing journey to hers. She may have been able to get over the situation she was in for the last six years within a matter of months. But she or he may not be able to get over theirs because, you know, it's it, it was a long time thing and it's just something that I can't get over. But don't take that trauma and that pain with you into your next situation, into your next relationship, into your next chapter. That's supposed to be a period at the end of that, not a comma, but a period. Commas means that story is going to keep going. That period signifies the end of that era. Let that die. Let it die where it is. Let it be gone. Let the emotions that were tied to it, let it be. Yes, you're going to remember all that stuff. I still remember the stuff I went through to this day. And remember, I've been with my husband for 10 years now. But the trauma I went through prior to him, I remember it all. I remember being mistreated. I remember not being loved. I remember being abused. I remember it all. But what I don't do now, because it was time, it still took time. I was still, I was still healing when my husband and I got together. Um, but I was in a, a well enough place to where my healing had taken enough time, had, had went through enough of the healing process to allow someone else into my life. You're never going to be completely healed from it. So I'm going to say that to you. So for those of you that feel like, you know, I need to be completely healed before I can get back with anybody. I don't want to do it because this is, trust me, I said the same thing. I said, Lord, I don't want to be with nobody else. I don't want to date nobody. I just want to be by myself. If I could be a hermit up in my house somewhere in somebody's shell, then let me be a hermit in my shell. But God said, girl, I got something better for you. Hold on. Hang in there. And I said, oh, okay. And because I literally almost missed him, my husband. 
because I was stuck in that headspace. So I don't want to. I ain't going to. I ain't finna because all them over there, they didn't treat me right. So it wouldn't make them any different. God had to say to me and sit my little self down and let me know because I sent them to you this time. It wasn't somebody you went to go get. I sent them to you. Yes, I used the vessels I used to get them to you, but I did it. And because I did it for you, this is going to be better. So, don't allow your heart to be so closed off. Allow yourself to heal, but don't be so closed off that you miss your opportunity. You miss your blessing that's right there in front of you. How will you know? I don't know how to tell you how you'll know. Just just open your heart to God. Open yourself up to um, to loving again, to being uh, cared for. Open yourself up to, you know, opportunity. If you see, if you get yourself in a situation and it doesn't feel right, don't stick around, but don't give up because you keep running into the wrong things. Allow God to do his work within you. Allow God to do it in his timing. It's never in our own timing. A lot of times we get mad because we're like, God, I've been single for five, 10, 12 years, but God's still in the pruning process. Some people take a little longer, just like certain flowers take time. You know what I'm saying? There's some flowers that bloom every year. And then there's some flowers that take a lot longer to bloom. Um, and that's pretty much what it is with God. It's like that pruning process. He's trying to take away that part of you, that part of you, to make sure you're good, at least good enough to be able to allow someone else into that space of yours. But as you continue to try to force the issue, you run into the roadblocks of people who don't value you, who don't see your worth, who don't appreciate you, who, you know, could care less about your feelings. They focus on what they can get, how they can get it, and what they can do with you while they do it. But if you're so close-minded, well, they don't look like who I asked you for, God, or they don't do this like I asked you for, God. But look at the rest of them. Look at the, the value and the, the uh, ability and the things that they do offer and bring to the table. Don't just look at the outward appearance. Now, I mean, yeah, I got lucky. My husband's handsome. But um, don't just, don't let that be, you know, in all seriousness, don't let that be the only thing that's keeping you from finding your happiness and your joy all over again. So, you know, suffering does happen and a lot of us deal with it and we go through that process with the goal and the focus is to be able to heal and recover from it. Um, for a long time, I had what the stigma of being an angry black woman because I had this R, um, RBM, RBF, RBF. Um, I'm trying not to I'm trying to change things in the way I talk and how I do it, but it was a resting bee face. And people thought I was angry all the time. I mean, for me it was like this look I put on me as a protection. It was my shield. It was my uh who am I? Uh she woman force field kept him keeping me from the idiots. I found some anyway. Some of them still saw through the mess. <laughs> some saw through it, but it kept, it shielded me from a lot of things. So I thought, but a lot of people that were around me, you know, felt like I was unapproachable because I carried that look on my face. They would tell me, baby girl, smile. It's going to be all right. And I was like, what? I'm good. I'm having a good day. Not even realizing that my face was like that. Well, you don't look like it. I was like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. But I, you know, People found out, oh, she's the sweetest person ever. Like, I try to be anyway, unless you take me off. You know, I'm a Scorpio. And, 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 but anyway, anyway, back back to it. But, like, no, like, the, um, the face I carried on myself was a depi de depictation of how I felt on the inside. So my facial expression showed that I would literally look like this. Like, who finna come up to you and talk to you? You looking like that all day long. Like, I'm literally looking tough. I'm looking hard. I'm like, I wish you would. I wish you would run up and say something. I'm literally looking that way. And I, I could have ran into my then husband back then and didn't, and didn't know it because I had that going on. But I had to also learn to change and not continue to live suffering. I was angry. I was dealing with a lot of things around me that wasn't allowing me to live. But also in regards to what me missing my husband then, it had to be in God's timing anyway. So I had to do some growing. 
I had to do my healing, my growing. I had to go through some stuff because in order to be ready for him, I had to go through some things um, to make sure that, you know, I appreciated him when I got him. And I do. I do. Again, later, later. Talk about that later. But um, a lot of times we go through that process and we we hold ourselves, we, we, we're angry or we snap at people, or we're aggressive, or whatever it is, because we're dealing with some things that we've been suffering with for so long. And until we work through it, learn to speak up about it, and get through the process of it, it's it's and it's gonna be um, it's gonna be a hard process. It's gonna be hard for you to really get to the other side of things. Hang on, y'all. Real life here. I've been talking to y'all. So I'm a little dry. Don't want to be on here with ashy lips, right? <laughs> but um, no, in all seriousness, though, like suffering is a real thing and we don't have to suffer in silence. We have, there's so much now. I think the people that live in today's world, we have so much more access to things that can help us not feel like we're suffering in silence versus what our parents had back when they were coming up. And early on for me, because I didn't know about a lot of things I've learned over the years, more things. And again, like I said, I learn more, I teach my children and we do better. We, you know, all of that. But um, there's so much out there, so many different um, organizations and so many different things in this world that could help us to be able to not feel like we're suffering, you know, suffering along. There's people like me that come on here and can also help you to know that you're not doing this by yourself. You're not in this alone. You're not the only one dealing with it. So don't feel like there's no hope for me because there is. Um, but suffering is real and it takes time for you to acknowledge that it's something that you're really going through and that you're dealing with and start to seek the help that you need. Um, so don't allow the past suffering and pain to cause you to look like the angry black woman or to come off as an angry black woman because this is how you look or people don't understand you or what have you you know let's change the narrative on how they see us and I know that I don't just talk to black women on my channel that's just a word and a connotation that relates to who I am as a person um but for just the angry woman or the angry person you know you don't want that stigma and that classification versus saying oh I'm just blunt I'm just bold Oh, I'm just real. No, no, you're mean and you're angry and you're upset and that's not helpful to you or anybody around you. You make people not want to be around you. You make people not want to be in your corner or be in your space or be near you because you act like that. So the goal is to work on you, help rebuild you and figure out you and where you are and how to, you know, bring your life to a place of um, peacefulness. Man, I'll tell you, so I'll track just a little bit. So when I found my peace, <laughs> man, it was something beautiful. It was like, I, I was unbothered by a lot. Like for a long time, um, I was, sorry y'all, I'm trying to find my Powerade. Hold please. Okay, I'm back. I had to get my Powerade and it wasn't nowhere nearby. <laughs> so I might be a little out of breath, but because it was going to get juicy. I needed some moisture on these vocals. But my piece, man, um, I became unbothered by people. Because I'm going to tell you what, what came about when I found my piece. I understood my worth. My worth. I understood my value. I understood who I was and who God saw me as who God saw me as and who God said I was. I understood all of that. Am I completely there? No. Um, all of that's always a work in progress. So, um, but my peace, man. Well, it's a good feeling when you really get there because what you do, once you find that peace, you are stern about letting anybody come in and mess that peace up. It won't be your mom, your daddy. It won't be your siblings. It won't be your friends, aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, nephews, none of them that can come in and disturb that peace. You work hard to get it. So you're going to fight hard to keep it. 
So you become unbothered by things and you start to remove yourself from things and situations that um, hold you in bondage, that keep you from having that circle of peace. So if, it, if, if it's not adding value to you, or if you don't feel like the things around you, there's reciprocity and the relationships, friendships, and things you're around, then you slowly start to move yourself out of it. And people gonna start to look at you like, oh, she thinks she better than me, or he think he the stuff, or what have you. No, honey, I'm just at peace. I'm at peace with life. I'm not, you know, I'm working towards living my life like Christ wants me to live it. I'm moving in that vein, that tra that trajectory of my life. And I'm unbothered by how you feel about me. I'm unbothered by what you got to say about me because I know who I am. I know whose I am and I know my value and my worth. So there's nothing you can say or do that's going to make me feel any less than like you used to be able to do. You used to say something and I would take that and just ooh, feel so bad because I looked up to you or I felt this way about you or this, that, or the other. So, but now... I look up to God and I look to him for my health, my help and my strength. And I look to him to keep me grounded. And I surround my, he surrounds me with the people in my circle that need to be in my circle, my close circle. And I have people that I still surround myself with, but my close circle is limited because he's protecting me. Like I'm protecting me. He's protecting my peace. I'm protecting my peace. We working together with a team. He's going in front of me, clearing things out the way. He's like, uh-uh, you got to go. You got to move. She ain't doing that. She ain't with that. She don't want that. Am I tempted with different things in life? Heck yeah. I'm human. Um, but I thank God that he continues to draw me back in, ground me back at zero, and bring me back to my sense of peace. So, when you find that peace, you'll know. Um, I've, I've helped a lot of people to be able to... Um, find their peace and just working with and talking with a lot of the students that I've had, the young adults now, because they're growing up and getting married and having kids. Oh, chai. Um, but the young adults that I've helped throughout my life, you know, just being just that person to help them understand their purpose, their value, their worth in life has really made a difference in their lives. And you see it in them before long, before I thought that I wasn't doing anything for anybody. I was just sharing what was in me to help them and, thought, oh, they're not getting it. They don't understand it. But they've shown me so much over the years that they value what I say and it helped them to find their value and worth in life. So I'm truly grateful, truly proud of them and just um, hoping that they're in the world doing awesome things. And I, I know that God's going to place me in place to be able to help so many more people. So I just enjoy helping people to discover who they are and to figure out life and their next phases and their next steps and things like that. So I thank God for the positions that I'm in now and being able to do all of that. So I thank you. 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 Um, in the next section of my book, I talk about forgiveness. Um, let's see. Well, it might be a part of seven, eight, nine, ten with that one. But we'll get in. We'll get in. So forgiveness, man, forgiveness is um, not just for the person you're forgiving. It's for you, too. Like, you got to be able to forgive them and forgive yourself in order for you to be able to um, be able to live. Because as long as you hold on to the things that have are the things and the people in the life that have hurt you and have done you wrong and things like that. Um, you are going to make your life stagnant because you'll reflect back on what so-and-so did. And like, you're literally holding on to something that happened 20 years ago. And you'd be like, I'm talking to them because this, that, and the other. And it's like, but then you look back at the thing and it's not as big, but then you got big things that you're like, not wanting to forgive the person for because they hurt you so bad. But think about this to those of you who are my Christians that are listening. How many times have you done something wrong and you asked God to forgive you and he did? So you can expect God to forgive you, but you can't forgive nobody? 
So you got to really sit back in that and really think about the fact that, man, I'm sitting here asking God to sit here and forgive me for everything that I've done wrong, but I can't sit and forgive someone for something that they've wrong, done wrong. And we've done some bad things in our lives. I'm, I mean, I know I, I can't speak for nobody else. I know I've done some bad things in life. And I definitely ask God to help forgive, help me to forgive and ask God to forgive me um, for the things that I've done. So what I did is I took myself on a journey journey to finding that peace y'all of forgiving those around me that have hurt me um i forgave my baby daddies that's a story for another day we'll talk about that here as we learn the women of the bible um i forgave my 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 parents i forgave friends you know i forgave siblings i forgave cousins aunts uncles People that have hurt me along the way that they didn't realize they did because, you know, me, I'm quiet, shy, internalizing things, don't say nothing type of thing. But I've, I've forgiven them. Forgiving people doesn't mean that you put yourself in harm's way all over again. Forgiving them means that you forgive them so you can be able to be free to live your life with peace. Knowing that you going to heaven without worrying about you holding on to a grudge from someone from 20 years ago forgiveness helps you to discover you know what's been holding on to you and holding you back from the things you want to do so that forgiveness isn't isn't for just them you forgive them to release yourself so i forgive myself for for the things i did to myself along the way that caused a lot of the trauma in my life um i forget i forgive myself for just you know giving up on me time and time again i forgive myself for not doing the things in life that i should have done you know and that you know i look at but i thank god now that i'm moving in the vein of the things that he wants me to do so the things that i've dreamed of doing and wanted to do i've been working towards it and i've been doing them and i'm truly grateful truly blessed and truly honored to have opportunities to be able to go out and do a lot of things that i've always dreamed of doing so um yeah you, you got to learn to forgive. Like, I forgive myself for being a food addict. Food addiction is real, y'all. Um, growing up, you know, and so we have to realize where it stems from before we can be able to work towards healing it. And I'm still a work in progress. Um, like I said, I wrote this book in 2019. And I, when I came to the realization and started de developing and discovering my peace, um, I came to the realization that I was a food addict. Um, and that where it stemmed from and why it was that way. Because growing up, like I said, we didn't have a whole lot. Mom didn't, we, we didn't have a whole lot in the house. We didn't have a whole lot. And mom didn't feed us very often. Like we may have gotten maybe that one meal a day if we were not in school. Um, when we were home from school, you better figure it out. Community center, we ate those lunches from there because, um, you know, mom, mom cooked when she felt like it. She would make her own stuff. And we would get like, you know how, um, I don't even know what it's like, but it's like you would get the scraps. So she would eat, let's say, a steak and potato, and we had pork and beans, if we had that. And, well, no, if she cooked herself some, we ate some. So I, I do give her that. But let's say we had pork and beans and hot dogs or something like that, and she got a steak and potato. And if she didn't eat it all, then we got, she, we would race to see who would get her plate to eat the rest of it. Because that's not something we got. She cooked it for the men in her life, and she cooked it for herself. Um... And that happened a lot. It wasn't just every now and then she would do that. It was a lot. And um, so that right there was difficult for me. And it was like, when I get this, that, or the other, I'm going to buy myself whatever I want. We didn't have sweets and stuff like that. And, and I now get why she didn't give us certain things. Because when I got a chance to get them, I was. it's been hard to let them go. They've caused a lot of issues. My weight picked up. Um, my teeth started going, you know, getting bad and stuff for me <clears throat> in enduring or indulging. That's the word. I'm, I'm getting there. I've been talking a while, y'all. We've been talking. Um, indulging in the things that, um, that I never had. So because I was deprived or felt deprived of all those things, and when I became um, in the position to be able to buy all those things, I overly consumed them. I was really gluttonous in all of these things. And God tells us not to be 
to be gluttonous. So um, that's something I'm working on still. And that food addiction is real. You really get into a point where you feel food is your comfort. You eat because you're mad. You eat because you sad. You eat because you're happy. You eat. You, you, I'm telling you. Look, you, so I don't know how many people do this, but let's say you got a, let's say your child got an A on a progress report that they've been doing so bad in and they finally get their A. You take them to get ice cream. Um, let's say you sad because, um, this, you sad because, um, of someone in your family died. So you, or something else that made you super sad and you decide to indulge yourself in cookies and cakes and candy and just overly eat stuff to help comfort you and make you feel well. And I get comfort food. I get how that helps us and that makes us, that we think it makes us feel because it, it releases that dopamine that we need in us to feel good. But um, the overall effect that it has on our bodies, on our mental, and, and, and the hold that it has on us is real. And we become addicted to the high we get from eating it. So it's just like an addict that may get high off of a drug. Food is the drug. So I was not only addicted to food, but I was also a sex addict. So I was addicted to, to sleeping with people. And... I think it was Sarah, Jake's Roberts. She's been my girl lately. But it was a message that she put out the other day that said, um, they, they, that, you know, it was some along the lines of, I'm, I'm the girl that's not even supposed to be able to have a marriage like the one I have. And that one hit. Because when I look back at everything that I've done in life with the partners I've been with, of course I was safe with them, but, just the, the promiscuity um, and the, the, the different things, the, the pregnancies, the abortions, the, uh, the trying to take babies away type of thing, all of that that went on in my world. I, for a long time, felt undeserving of having a marriage or a relationship with anybody that that loved me because I felt like I wasn't worthy of that. I'm out here being... Um, uh, like one, like, you know, being out here, you know, doing things that people don't do or so they say they don't do. I'm being vulnerable in this space because I know there's somebody out there that has been hiding from their past and not actually, um, acknowledging their past so they can be able to dive into the future without having that hovering over their heads. Um, so because of my addiction to food and my addiction to sex, I dealt with a lot of things in life and felt undervalued and unworth, but I've forgiven myself for the things that I've been through and God has forgiven me. Otherwise he would have left me out there doing what I'm doing and, and I wouldn't be in the position I'm in now. Not to say that the people that are still out doing what they're doing, that God hasn't forgiven them. He has, he's just ready for you and waiting for you to forgive yourself so you can be able to move into a life that, he has designed for you. Jeremiah 29, 11 is my favorite scripture. My friend um, gave me this scripture when I was writing my book and it helped me to realize and know that um, there is hope for me, you know, because the, the scripture talks about, um, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And I, I really, really, that wasn't the scripture that was my favorite because I didn't even know about it. But as I continue to study God's word and learn more about it and put people around me that are in God's word, I learn to gravitate to those that have meaning in my life even more so as I grow. So that scripture has, has helped me over the last four years, really uh, three, four years, really, um, really discover who I am and know that the things that I went through, there was a pain, purpose or pain I went through. And to realize that, you know, um, he's got, there's hope for me still. There's a future for me still. Just like there's hope and a future for a lot of you.